Good morning and welcome to a special election edition of This Week. It is here after two years. I'm Mitt Romney and I'm running for president of the United States. We are not going back. We are moving this country forward. More than two billion dollars. This man has courage in his soul and a spine of steel. What is missing is leadership in the White House. Just two days to go in this historic campaign. In these final hours, is Obama closing with a kick? Do Romney's last minute move signal confidence or desperation? Oh my God. How has Hurricane Sandy changed the race? And will we know the winner Tuesday night? We'll ask our headliners, Obama's top White House strategist, David Pluff, and Romney's senior advisor, Ed Gillespie. Plus, insight, analysis, and election predictions on our powerhouse roundtable with George Will, Donna Brazil, Matthew Dowd, Koki Roberts, and Ron Brownstein of the National Journal. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. It's your voice, your vote. Reporting from ABC News election headquarters, George Stephanopoulos. Hello again, this is it. Just hours to go before the final votes. And for so many Americans, up to 40% of voters, election day has already come and gone. A new record that has already led to long lines like these at polling places across the country. Both campaigns see some good news in the early vote, which makes sense. The race has been tight from the start, the closest in memory. And today, it could not be closer. Our brand new ABC News Washington Post poll shows an absolute dead heat. 48 for Obama, 48 for Romney. Still in those critical battleground states, nearly all of the public polls this week show a small but steady lead for President Obama. And it's in the battlegrounds, especially those Midwestern states of Iowa, Wisconsin, and Ohio, where the candidates are making their closing arguments. The American auto industry is back on top. Osama bin Laden is dead. We have made real progress. But we are here today because we know we've got more work to do. The question for this election, in my view, is this. Do you want to stay on the same course we're on, or do you want real change? Because we represent real change. And with that, let's hear from the campaign's top strategist, Ed Gillespie for Governor Romney and David Pluff for the president. And David, let me begin with you. Good morning. You know, I know you've been steadily confident throughout this campaign, but you saw our ABC News Washington Post poll still absolutely deadlocked, 48-48. It can't seem to break out of that range. How can you remain so confident? Well, George, we've always known this is going to be a very close race, uh, but it is going to be decided in the battleground states. And we think in those states, you mentioned three in the Midwest, in Florida, Virginia, Colorado, uh, New Hampshire, uh, we, Nevada, we have a, an important lead in those states. Early vote's gone very well for us. We think we're closing with, with strong momentum. The president's having terrific events out there. So I'm confident two days from now the president will be reelected. Re we have the support to win this election. We have to make sure it materializes in vote, and that's the challenge for us over these next two days is to make sure we are getting all those supporters to the polls on Election Day. So much of this last week defined by Hurricane Sandy. The president got in a lot of praise from people like New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Mayor Bloomberg of New York. But it's not unanimous. Some pretty harsh criticism from the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, on CNN. Take a listen. I don't know what the heck he was doing in Nevada while people are still being discovered dead in New York. I mean, I, if I were the president of the United States, I sure wouldn't be flitting around the Midwest and the West. I feel pretty darn offended seeing my president floating around campaigning while people are suffering. Your response? Well, Mayor Giuliani's running around the country campaigning for Mitt Romney and popping off. The people in New York, in New Jersey, Mayor Bloomberg, Governor Christie, Governor Cuomo, Governor Malloy in Connecticut, Governor Tomlin in West Virginia, they're working with this president and this administration in FEMA every day. And our focus needs to be, and really the country's been united, uh, Mayor Giuliani may be an exception to this, in focus on recovery, making sure we stand by those uh, who've lost so much who need to recover. And this is going to take a long time. Uh, but, you know, the, the federal government's doing all they can to partner with state and local officials. Uh, you know, we flew. Uh, you know, equipment, power equipment uh, in C-17s from California to help restore power, getting fuel into the area, direct assistance to help people with lodging and food. So we're doing everything we can uh, to make sure, and this is going to take a while, but that we stand by the people in the eastern seaboard who've been so affected. Your predecessor, Carl Rove, of course, top strategist for George W. Bush, has said that Hurricane Sandy in this last week has helped give the president a real boost politically. Do you agree? 
Uh, listen, we're not worried about the politics. Uh, we're worried about making sure we do the right thing by those who've been affected by the storm. We think this has been a stable race. I think Karl Rove might have said that because a few days ago he predicted a big Romney win. Uh, and my sense is Karl is going to be at a crossroads himself on Tuesday when he tries to explain to the people who wrote him hundred millions of dollars uh, why they fell up short. So uh, listen, we're confident the president has the electoral votes uh, to win this uh, if we get our vote out. And that's what we're focused on in the next two days. You do remain so confident. You talked about the firewall, Ohio, Iowa, and Wisconsin, but we're seeing Mitt Romney go into Pennsylvania today. I know you and a lot of Democrats think that's a desperation move, but some of the polls are tightening right there, and it is a state where you haven't invested a lot of resources. Worried at all? Well, first of all, George, we, we have a great organization in Pennsylvania, much better than Governor Romney's. We've been working it for two years. So we've got a great organization, great volunteers. Uh, listen, this is a desperate ploy at the end of a campaign. I mean, to win Pennsylvania, Governor Romney would have to win two-thirds of the independents. He's not going to do that anywhere, much less Pennsylvania. So the truth is they're, they're throwing some ads up and Governor Romney's you know, traveling into states he's not going to win. But what really matters in terms of the Electoral College is we're the ones playing offense. George, as you know, a few weeks ago, Governor Romney's campaign was saying, oh, we're going to win Florida, we're going to win Virginia. On Monday, the day before the election, Governor Romney's going to Florida and Virginia. Why? Because he's at great risk of losing those states. So in Florida, Virginia, North Carolina, we're playing offense on states that they thought they had the inside track on, and they don't. So, you know, I think a lot of this is a smokescreen to try and mask the fact that in the places that will decide this election from an Electoral College standpoint, point, Ohio, Iowa, Wisconsin, they're, uh, it's going to be close, but they are definitely in a, in, a, in a weak position heading into election day. So is there anything that worries you in these final 48 hours? <laughs> Well, sure, George. I mean, we, we listen, four years ago, when uh, this time, uh, two days out, everybody thought we were sailing to victory, uh, we were very concerned because, uh, w you know, support levels don't mean anything if they don't materialize into vote. So we're just going to, you know, the president's traveling around the country, the vice president, the first lady, former President Clinton is going to be with us today in New Hampshire, as he was last night in Virginia. We're throwing everything we can at this. But this really comes down to our amazing volunteers, our staff out in the field, who have to make sure the people who support the president uh, exercise their right to vote. So that's our biggest task right now uh, uh, from a political standpoint uh, is to make sure that we uh, get our vote out. Finally, even if the president wins, his margins are going to be smaller than last time around. Doesn't that mean less of a mandate and won't it make it harder for the president to succeed in his second term? Well, George, you know, as soon as the election's over, we've got to move on uh, uh, to the pressing business. We've, we've got, obviously, some fiscal and tax issues in front of us. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, potential, I think, to do some great things on education, on manufacturing, uh, on immigration. And so, no, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, we need to try and, and have compromise and balance. If we do that, if those two things are present, we're going to be able to solve our long-term deficit challenges. We're going to be able to do some things to create jobs in the short term and build on the progress that we've seen over the last four years. And that's really the question. Are we going to build on the progress that we've made uh, after we've dug out of this recession, or are we going to take an enormous risk and go back to the same policies that wrecked our economy and devastated the middle class, which is really, at the end of the day, in our view, all Governor Romney's offering. David Pluff, thanks very much. Thanks, George.